two minutes. Mm. Okay. Um, who's next? Oh, 99. Paulina Gagarina is back with a new single called I Will Not. But you know what? I will, I will, I will love this song. I love this video. If you haven't seen the video, you need to stop right now and do it. Basically, she discovers that her man is cheating on her. So she dyes her hair a different color. She goes to some casino hotel. She puts on a mask, convinces him to sleep with her. And so basically, he doesn't know he's having an affair on Paulina with Paulina. <laughs> This is, it's difficult to understand, but the song is amazing. It's very dancey and dark, and it's a step away from the kind of happy clappy of um, A Million Voices. I really like the fact that she's moved on from A Million Voices, and this is really good. This is a really good pop song. I mean, I, I do like it a lot, and, and I think Paulina is just, I mean, she's a star. She's absolutely a star. She's very good singing. She's very good like at everything. And I do like the fact that she hasn't kept on what she did at Eurovision, like Colors Half, for instance, not after in Israel. He's kept doing the same things. But Polina has moved on, and I love that she does it. I think we're seeing the true Polina, because there was a clip that emerged over the summer, um, about maybe three years ago, where she did the Shady Lady duet with Annie Lorak, and she absolutely slayed that time, like she had the sass and the attitude. And then Eurovision, she seemed to kind of become a good girl, and like, oh, daughter of the earth or whatever whereas now she's back doing what she's good at and like she's got the attitude like she's the bad girl um and then the video it like the video is just hilarious and like it looks so expensive but then there's just little things like it's obviously loads of money but then the wig they were just like oh we won't bother giving you realistic black hair because it's the most false black hair i've seen in a long time and then the whole plot like if you were to dig into it there's so many plot holes because the fact that her boyfriend doesn't recognize her with just a little mask and a hair dye. Like, surely she has, like, he's seen her body and that kind of thing. But it's a hilarious thing. <laughs> it is hilarious. It is so pop. You know, they, they talk about this explores the relationship of a man and a woman, but I love that it's tongue in cheek. Um, and it's just great. I think you're right. This is the real Paulina. She is an EDM goddess, and it gives me hope that she'll return to Eurovision, you know, somewhat soon. You know, because she, she, in another year, she would have won. This was the top three this year were so close. Um, she's got it. She's really got it. And not to take anything away from Million Voices, because that was one of my favorites in Vienna, but I think this is her style. This is what's going to propel her from superstar to like intergalactic superstar. Maybe when Russia has moved on from all these peace, happiness, love yeah. songs, uh, Polina can come back with something that's true to her. She has the potential to win. I mean, she, she can be Russia's next Dima Vila. Indeed, she got second, so maybe she can come back in 2017 and win. Why not? It's the sort of thing that we only get from Russia or Ukraine or some of the countries out east. Like, Svetlana Loboda has the ridiculous videos, Dima Bilan has the ridiculous <laughs> videos. They all do the ridiculous videos and they do them fabulously, and um, we need to part of the gang. Ruth Lorenzo is back with a new single, 99. This is very nostalgic, looking back at teenage love. You guys, this is my jam. Like, this reminds me of Katy Perry's The One That Got Away, but it's less cheesy. It's like, it's nostalgic, and like, you're like, oh, that's kind of touching, but it's like still like a cool song. I just, I love this. I love the video that's very Instagram. Um, this woman can do no wrong. I just love Ruth. I mean, I do think she's probably our best representative ever. And uh, I think that 99 is a very, very good song. At first I thought it was a bit repetitive and a bit like too typical, but it's got stuck in my head and I just keep on listening to it because it's very, very good. For the video, I, I was quite surprised because the beginning of the video is like very rude. Like she always does this thing with her, her first, her shots at the at the face, like and and this, all, all these all these things that she always does on her videos, like very typical. But then she changes and makes these whole things from like the nineties, and it's it's pretty original. I think it's easily her best song since your vision since Dancing in the Rain, um, and it's just so catchy and it's such kind of a simple song, and it's easy to relate to, even if you were only like a little tot in 99 or weren't born in 99, you can relate to it and sing along and think of the memories. The only thing is the video is very summery. 
And when we're going into winter, I don't know whether it's a nice thing that, oh, love when nice and warm, or, oh, that would have been great during the summer. Ruth Lorenzo is always bringing the heat, so it has to be summer. The woman is permanently in the sun. She is our Spanish sun goddess. In 2012, Belgium's Iris asked us, would you? And Europe said they would not. <laughs> she did not advance to the final because that song was cheesy, boring, and forgettable. But you guys, she is back with a new single and I'm seriously loving it. I still would not. <laughs> As Parek wrote on the on his review, in, in 2012 she gave like a general drawn for Europe, me included. And now she's gone from making me jump to making me raise my eyebrow. Yeah, the song is better than Good You. It's better than some other things she has released, but I still don't see it. Uh, I'm actually a fan of the song. I didn't like her in well, the Baku at all. But Heartbreaker is like a real progression for her because one, she's not a needy little miss who's like going, Would you miss me? Would you do 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 do? Because now she's like, If you break my heart, you're out, and I'm not going to have any tears, I'm not going to cry, I'm going to move on. And then the music video, she's like got all this attitude and she's not worried, like she's fierce and like she's determined. You're not going to doubt that she'll get a revenge. And then the music, like it's all very dance. Beat, loads of beats and bass and drums and like with none of the piano and guitars that she had before and then like she's obviously trying to be more of an artist mm -hmm. because in the music video she's in a bath and there's steam coming up and like there's just hanging cues from the ceiling white glowing cues mm -hmm. and like she's doing all this abstract stuff in the video like she's going across a sandbar so it kind of looks like she's deep with walking about the water um the song is great like it gets stuck in my head, but it's not perfect. It's very flat, mm. but it's definitely a step in the right direction for her. Yeah, it seems like she's landed in the right genre. I, I guess we have to remember that she was only 17 when she was in Baku. She was the youngest contestant that year. And now she's kind of, you know, she's in her 20s. She's a woman. She's taking back the baths and wants you to watch. Like, she has arrived at womanhood. And I think that this is what we should see from her moving forward. Um, again, following the trend, the EDM thing, this has a dance vibe to it. Um, it's much more mature and sexy. I think it's a bit too much for her. I can't fit her, but not, I mean, not too much in the sense that the song is too good for her, but that I can't see her voice or, or her itself fitting such a moving song. She's got this kind of voice that it's not like, I won't say it's like Jess Lynn, but it's a sort of anonymous voice that can be kind of interpreted and is quite flexible and is good with dance music. Like Jess Glynn's voice has kind of made her a star and she's just with these dance tracks that there's nothing particularly special about her and I think that Iris has potentially the same quality. I really don't like the change of name to Iris with the A because I don't know if it exists abroad but Iris like that is a brand of air conditioner in Spain. So I can't take her seriously if she's called like my air conditioner. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Scoo is back with the single Gravity. And you guys, if this is what moving to Los Angeles does to you as an artist, I say come home immediately. <laughs> this is like he's trying to be Justin Timberlake and he's both too short and doesn't have the swag for this. Like he was good in A Friend in London with that rock thing. This just, it doesn't feel organic. It feels very forced and it kind of breaks my heart because I really like him as an artist, but I don't like him as this artist. He has transformed into a kind of Toji from Norway. I mean, can't you do some anything without getting naked? Please. Including I mean, sleeping with priests. Toji was fucking a priest. This one is fucking like a bad copy of Nicki Minaj. Okay. The song is not really good. I, I don't really like the song, but the video doesn't improve it. If I want to see three minutes of people mm, fucking you know, pretending they are fucking, I'm just going to put a porn movie. But see, the whole thing is so cheap. Like. <laughs> The, the quality of the camera work, it doesn't look like a high production. Then the model they've used, like she looks like was she electrocuted or like she did have a wig and she put a mop on her head. If you're going to be a pop star, it's a break from reality. You're like, right, I'm not living in the real world. I'm going to have a supermodel in my video. But no, Tim she is with some average woman. And like, she's a lovely woman. I'm Can sure. I just like, say, she's not. 
I'm pretty sure she served me at a restaurant in Azerbaijan in 2012. <laughs> she looks like a motherly waitress. I interrupted. Please go ahead. <laughs> There's this whole thing with once they go up to the bedroom and they decide to have sex. Like, and it's showing her nipples. Like, I don't think Tim is being a feminist and taking part in the Free the Nipple campaign. I, like, he's just doing it for controversy. And then they have the sex scene, where, like, we talked about Polina's video earlier, and we see Polina having, like, it's implied that she's had it. Like, she's yeah. in bed, and, like, they're pulling up the covers or whatever. Where is Tim? We see your one bouncing up and down. The shots of her, she's wearing the skimpiest stuff thongs. Like, we really don't need to see it. And, like, there, it's, it's gratuitous amount of time spent on it. Because, right, a glimpse, it'd be fine. People are saying that, oh, all these people have done these controversial videos. Miley Cyrus, blah, blah, blah. Miley Cyrus had more chemistry with her sledgehammer than Tim does with this woman. And he, we see him having sex with her for, like, three months. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it, it doesn't really fit. The hotel doesn't fit with the lyrics, which go like this. Through the clouds and the thunder, what lies beyond I'll wonder. Out of this atmosphere, take me to space where there is no gravity, light years away to a new galaxy. He is going to bed with a midwife, like a middle-aged housewife. It, it just, just doesn't work. I know Tim speaks good English, but his diction in this song, I mean, he's like taking me space. What are you singing this in a Belarusian national final? Take me space, <laughs> take me space, come on. And then the lyrics, like, they're kind of implying, oh, that he's a bit of a lost soul and, like, that he's a bit insecure and this kind of thing. And, like, he's been doing that with Supernova and whatever, he had another song as well. Um, but see, the thing is, that doesn't fit well with Tim Shu either, because, like, he's done, like, three or four interviews with Devin, and in every single one of them, like, he's a real cocky, arrogant so-and-so that's, like, not the slightest insecure. So like, I don't know what he's trying to do with his song, um, and the song doesn't mesh with the video, and the video doesn't mesh with anything. Just a closing point, in 2011, at the Eurovision after party in Dusseldorf, I went to the toilet at the main party with the press and the Eurovision artist, and Tim Scoo urinated next to me, um, and he was talking to his bandmate Sebastian about a lady he fancied. The man has swagger and attitude, and I bring this up because it was real and it was likable, even if it was raw. And I feel like this music just feels too manufactured. I want him back to his rock, alt rock roots, because that was mm -hmm. that was hot. Um, so Tim, please come home.